Okay, I am calling to order the regular monthly meeting of the EDC, February 1st at 6.33. Our agenda is here. Sorry, let me share my screen. Apologies. The, the, I don't have a copy of the housing stuff, Jill, but uh, those are, it will make it easier. Our agenda is, as you can see on the screen, after the normal items, additions or deletions, citizen comments, um, we have two new business items, the housing funding proposal and an update on the downtown rejuvenation upcoming proposal. And we have old business, which is EDC communications and marketing objectives in the context of overall EDC objectives and the special tourism initiatives. So that special tourism initiatives is just a, a very brief topic. So we have three, I think, longer topics to discuss. I, as per my memo, that I think everyone who's on this call has received, um, I'm suggesting that we go through this in a slightly different order, though, because of... Uh, I just think that it, the discussing and the, the housing funding proposal will make more sense if we've talked about our overall objectives first. So after we go through the first three items, I'm going to suggest that we talk about the context of the overall EDC objectives, that parenthetical point. Then we talk about the housing fund pr uh, proposal. Then we talk about EDC communications and marketing objectives. Then we talk about the downtown rejuvenation. So housing will go second, not, not first. Okay. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Hearing none, are there any citizen comments? I suppose I should proceed that by, are there any citizens? There are several citizens here, three and one on the video. Yeah, and two on the video. Are there any citizen comments? No, all right. Okay, so I'd like to start with the, in the context, the comment in the context of overall EDC objectives. Um, the select board has asked all of the commissions in town to report to the select board in March. They haven't set a date yet. So what their objectives are, their overall mission. It may just be focused on 2024. They haven't written the exact question yet, which I think is a terrific idea. And I've said that the EDC will enthusiastically participate. Um, it it forces, forces us a bit to... I think, confirm what our objectives are. And I have a straw man proposal for what the objectives should be, but uh, which I think reflect, and they've been shared once or twice before in this meeting without too much discussion. Um, for those of the, in the room, it's the document, little document called Woodstock Economic Development Commission Objectives and Desired Outcomes. And I think, I hope it's on here. Oh yeah, there it is, okay. So I just like to sort of take us through this. This is brainstorming and it's, in case you haven't figured this out already, my approach to dealing with big broad issues is to put a stake in the ground and present it and then let people react to it rather than have a blank piece of paper and say, what should our objectives be? I just think it's much more efficient and productive. So that's what I've done. Anything on this can be changed. We could start over with a blank piece of paper if we want to. I mean, I hope we don't, but we could. So here's just three slides to have to have our discussion. The select board has asked us what are our objectives, and you know, there's at least four examples of EDC objectives. We've been told, and this is why there's a question mark. We've been told more than once in EDC meetings that the objective of the EDC when it was voted in was to basically provide support to the merchants. We've been, we know what the language was that was voted on, which were four words, basically, economic and community development. We know what our, we've been saying what our priorities are for the last three or four years, marketing Woodstock, expanding workforce housing, et cetera. And this new proposal, which I think it encompasses all of the above, is is threefold develop our tourism economy develop our resident or community economy and ensure our economies are resilient and we could have different proposals but that 
third, that fourth, that new proposal in red is here. And what I wanted to do is to link it because those phrases are about not, not much more helpful than economic and community development, which is what the voters approved. So what I wanted to link it to is a series of outcomes. And this list of outcomes reflects, I think, the current debate or current discussions over the last six months of the kind of outcomes that we many people want to have. But it's absolutely not complete. And I can already tell you what three or four things are that are missing. And so I'd like to have a discussion about the blue balls and the dots underneath. I just want to go through them, and then I'm going to stop and and uh, and ask for additions. Or actually, I'm going to even add a few of my own and then ask for additions. So develop our tourism economy. What are the outcomes we want? And by the way, I think this is, it's really important for us to talk about outcomes because that begins to get to measures um, and, and more tangible measures. Some of these outcomes can be measured. So what do we want? Vibrant merchants. Pick a different word than vibrant. Successful merchants. We want the merchant community to succeed and thrive. We want year-round activity, but it should say sort of we want level year-round activity. We don't really – it would be great to have more activity but not more peak activity, maybe even less peak activity. It would be great if every month was, was the same and it added up to a very rich financial and cultural environment. We want satisfied visitors. These are, aren't in order, by the way. They're, they're the, in the order I thought of them. We want a strong employee base. We want more food options. Some of the things that are obviously missing, we want enough events for visitors and for, well, for visitors. So that's part of satisfied, satisfied visitors. We want in our second objective to develop the resident or the community economy. We want, to, uh, we want more local retail options. People have, whether or not we can get that, I've argued it's very, very hard, but people want to be able to buy dish towels in Woodstock at a low cost. We want a growing resident population, and we want more school-aged children in that resident population. And we want the community members, not just the visitors, to be satisfied with what's happening with tourism. The amount of visitors, the, their behavior, that's the word engagement or behavior, politeness, whatever, whatever, into, whatever words we want to use. Um, and some of the things that are missing here, again, are, are more events for locals. Um, we want to have sufficient childcare capacity for locals. That's definitely missing in the second column. Um, there may be some other things that are missing as well. Housing? Uh, so, yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely, right. <laughs> Adequate housing for our workforce, which would go, I think, in both the first and the second columns. Um, yeah, exactly. So, so, in other words, all of our th – this is not a statement of a change in priorities. It's a different way of describing our priorities in a way that I think maybe is more meaningful but everything that's on our list currently fits into this. And then third, and we've talked about this, and more importantly than talking about it or articulating it, we don't use the word resilient much in our discussions. We do occasionally. But we have absolutely acted on this. right? We created instant, some of our best work. We created the COVID relief fund immediately. We created the lost wages fund. Both of those initiatives would, would come in this third column. And unlike the... First and second column, the third column is really has been, and I'm going to propose continues to be focused just on businesses, right? The ability for businesses to withstand unanticipated events for whatever reasons, I think reasonable ones, we decided not to give grants to individual people who couldn't afford their heating bills. That was the hub and other organizations. We decided to try to support merchants and the business community via directly helping their employees, individuals, obviously, but it was a business focus. So I'm proposing that in our three columns, the third one really is focused on business. It doesn't have to be. There's nothing that says the words economic and community development don't preclude us from doing something differently. But this is what I'm proposing. Okay. Comments, changes, start with a blank sheet of paper. Uh, Todd. Yeah, I think um, as far as I'm concerned that we've, we've debated this for such a long time in the last year, there are many, you know, synonyms. We can substitute things in here or there, but this this to me doesn't, and I'm reiterating what you already said, 
doesn't change what we've already been moving toward and working on. So I think it is easier and clearer to read and could use a few points, but I, I don't think we need to debate what hundred different points can go in there for too long uh, personally, but, um, but I think it's good work. And I, I, I support the document as it stands in this way uh, with a little bit of touch up. But let me add, by the way, that that we probably the touch up probably shouldn't be done in this group. I, I you know, we can do a lot of we can do touch up. Let's just let's agree that if what we want to come out with tonight, if we can, is something that all it requires is some wording touch up. It's not substantively different from whatever we talk about. That, tonight. That's, that's, not, that's how I, that's how that's how I feel. Right. OK. Larry. Um, yeah, I just it, it seems like um, those two bubbles, the first two. Are, need to just include our EDC priorities. I mean, you started to you, you yeah. started filling them in, but it's that I got a little confused as to our priorities versus our objectives in the in the way it was put out there. But you know, okay. anyway, you go, if you're going to put, well, I would say that events. Let's just do, do it right now, just to see if it, it fits. Events would fit under the both of the first two balls. Mm -hmm. uh, child care fits under the second ball. Mm -hmm. Housing fits under both balls I say three. Uh, right everyone's going to always want to put their thing in the third column we've already this isn't the first suggestion of, of that that's happened so yes so housing fits maybe in all three um downtown rejuvenation fits in the first two and child care fits in the middle one did i get off i think i got off oh no sorry and marketing woodstock fits depending on what it's doing, it either fits in the first one or the second one or the third one or all of them. So none of our priorities go away and, and the word should be on the page. Right. So we just, we're yeah. just adding some things to our priorities. Exercise. I don't even know that we're, I suppose so, but more importantly, I think is we are, to me at least, is we're, our we're just using, we're grouping things, we're grouping things more around their purpose. Now there's our purpose our purpose isn't to have more childcare. Our purpose is to have a robust community resident economy. And the way to do that is to have more childcare. Our purpose isn't to build housing. Our purpose is to have a robust tourism economy and a robust community. We're, we're, and, and, and in a moment, when we come to the next line, and the outcomes is designed to highlight what, what, what we're trying to get. These words are designing, are decided, designed to explain what we're trying to get to, not how we're trying to get to it. And our priorities were more how we're trying to get to it, but they weren't it. You see what I mean? Right. And then, but that that explains the difference between the objectives and priorities. But then right. get into outcomes. It, 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 it's, it's fine. It just seems yeah. I get a little muddled into the, the, they seem to be the some some of the same that, things. The outcomes, sorry, the outcomes are designed to be measurable. And so, for example, expand housing, I suppose, is measurable, but an outcome of, we, for example, the housing proposal we're going to see today says we want to build 32 units. That, to me, is an outcome. We either succeed or fail at that. Expand housing, okay, is an outcome. It's just a little bit more vague, so. But yeah, okay, I understand. These are anytime any organization that's done mission, objectives, goals, outcomes, the categories always overlap and confuse. Yeah, I just think we need to be careful that down the road, two years from now, somebody come in and say, "Well, you said you were going to do this, but you're actually not you're doing this." So we just want to be yeah careful here with how we. I think we'll use we can use this document once we've refined it to right. check against all the things we're doing. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, Roger, uh, Roger, let me, I'm going to ask, I'm going to call on you, but I just like, because we're on a roll here, I just want to ask the other EDC members who are on, there's only a few to comment, you don't have to, but I'll just go down vertically on our screen, Deborah, and then Greta, if you have something to say. Wait, we're, we're oh, and Todd, okay, we have five, we have a quorum. Deb, you, you want to say? Marion, too. Oh, Marion, you, sorry, you, oh, I'm Marian. not, I don't, I don't see the non- is here, too. I don't see the non-video people. I'll, let me add that to my list. Sorry. If you... I'm a video person. Oh, yeah, okay. so Marion all... and Mike are on video. Okay, Michael's here. Great. All right. So, so, uh, so. Uh, you could uh, decrease the size of the slides. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So, so Deborah, Mar in order of, that are on our screen. Deborah, Marion, Greta, Michael. So, if you don't, you can pass. But just if you have any. 
just Joe's the only one not here. Yeah, but you're muted, I think. Not in Zoom on your PC. I will come back to Deb. We'll come back to you. It's the same problem as the last time, but it's not in Zoom. So who's Greta? No, uh, people now have moved around. <laughs> Who did I say? Marion? You did say Marion. I can go. Um, I, I actually would echo what Todd said. It's really tempting to sort of like get into the minutia, but I think <laughs> I, I actually really like this. I think they are a better representation of what we're trying to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, we can we can spend all day on the details, but I would say in terms of direction, I think this is I, I'm I really like this. Okay, that's great. Who who did I say next? I think Greta and then Michael. Yeah, I've <clears throat> sorry. I think it's great. I've been looking at different versions of a lot of this information. It's really nice to have it all in one place. And I think that specifically kind of being involved in the um the marketing and communications goals, trying to think about what those are going forward, it's really kind of come back to okay, well, these are the EDC objectives at large. So it's it's good to just be really clear about what everyone is looking to do and how the specific priorities can be used to get there. Um, and I think that a lot of the things that we came um, to consider the, the marketing and communications goals were, um, were, uh, sorry, how do I want to say this? Um, informed by the community meeting and the surveys and things like that. So I think it's kind of feels full circle to me, just having seen a lot of versions of this. Okay. All right. That's good. Michael. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm happy to see some of, uh, our thoughts, you know, uh, reflected in this latest version, um, John. So thanks for putting it together. Okay. All right. Well, so w what, what, I think you're letting. You oh, still sorry, got Roger. nothing from you, Deborah. Deborah's trying to speak. Oh, Deborah, go ahead, and then Roger. No, but she, yeah. we can't hear you. Do you want to try? Why don't you try calling in on your cell phone? He did already, I think. Deb, you, I mean, well, I don't know what I'm talking about. But it's got to be your microphone volume. That's what they always tell me. All right. And they say to me, "Turn it down," and then it still doesn't work. But that's what they say, you know. I don't think that's a technical comment, Todd. But I, Deb, I really gonna, appreciate Todd's Todd's technical. I was, I was gonna make fun of you for saying I don't see video people, but I just left it with this bit. You yeah, know. you you're a bigger man than I am. Yeah. All right, um, Deborah, may, try calling in with your cell phone on the website. Is the telephone number and so forth because that will work for sure. So, um, and you can yeah, Deb, call me and I can try to help you. Michael is offering. Yeah, I, I think that appeared. Michael, we're gonna stick to EDC business for this, if you don't mind. <laughs> All right, Roger. In the meantime, Roger, go ahead. Um, so I think this is great. I would just add something probably under develop our resident community economy, uh, an objective of diversifying the economy. The, the yeah. Is there anyone who disagrees? That, that's a, a big substantive point. Um, is there anyone who disagrees with that? Uh, although I'm not, it, it, it adds something to our work. I'm not opposed to it at all. I think it's a good idea. I think it's hard to achieve. But is there anyone on the EDC who's uncomfortable with that? I would just say I, at, at first glance, that actually sounds like a really good idea, but because it's new, I, I'd like to think about it a little bit more, but it's it, it sounds oh, yeah. sounds right. Well, you know what we'll do? I'm going to put, I'm going to have a kind of an asterisk category. I'm going to, I'm going to add it on the chart. I'm going to put an asterisk next to it. It says new, we're thinking about it. And when I go to the select board, I'm going to describe the status of the development of this part page by saying, by describing where it is, which is we're all comfortable broadly. Most of us think it needs to be tweaked and so forth, but the blue balls aren't going to like, aren't the words aren't going to change. The things that are on there probably won't disappear, et cetera. So, yeah, I agree. It's it's one that needs thinking about because how the strategies for doing it and the measurable outcomes are obviously complicated. As, right. Uh, Deborah. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, 
I mean, I, you know, I mean, right now, I just wanted to make sure you could hear me mostly for later because everything's really been said. There's no need for us to continue. Yeah, to continue to um, talk about this, you know, in the sense of like the objectives, they, they feel like it has taken into account everything that we've been saying and talking about. I think the only thing that will help us is to continue to narrow or narrow or expand, depending on what we want to say, um, the outcomes. And the, the clearer we are in the outcomes that, you know, it, it will help focus us. It'll be something that we can refer to when we're in between projects or thinking about things. If we have really strong outcomes, um, I think that's going to be really helpful. So that would be the only thing that I would continue to discuss other than what you want to call the, the blue spheres. But Great. that's it. I strongly agree with that. Okay. All right. So, um, Oh, sorry, uh, Jeff, go ahead. Can you just do it from the podium? Sorry, we don't have a camera there, but uh, I'll get a camera there. Sure. You know, there, I, I think this is terrific what you put together. Um, but there's there's one that confuses me <clears throat> based on reality and history under uh, developed resident community economy, um, both above and below, more local retail options, like you said, you know, inexpensive dish towels. Right. Yeah, I remember meetings in the 80s over that when we still had stores that still had some things like that, that just simply by the nature of what people are buying and doing couldn't survive in Woodstock. And I don't know if the EDC wants to put money into something or an attention into something that's really not likely to be achievable in, in reality uh, in terms of um, – what you're saying we have we have grocery store we have gillingham's uh for basic needs but i don't know about right. what you really mean by more local retail options when you mention something like affordable dish towels i, uh, I have very funny uh dish towels that are probably a little more expensive than than walmart but um it's, i that's the one th thing that I don't know why the EDC would want to put attention to when the reality is we don't have the population and with the online ordering the inclination to do that. My I, I think I, I understand your point. You understood what the word the words are shorthand and you understood precisely what they mean what they meant in your reflect your comments reflect the fact that you understand what the suggestion was. I happen personally to share your point about the feasibility of it. If we can have a short discussion about this, Beth first and then and then Jill, but then I think we should move on. This could be an area of one of the refinements. We could certainly strike this one or put an asterisk next has to be studied. We're not making spend money on it yet. So Beth, my, my only concern in having it there, um, and you have the the market on the green, you have the where people do sell handmade items and they have the Mount Tom Farmer's Market, that's it's S6, um, is that it kind of opens it up to, and I hate to even say this publicly, something like that you see all over the country right now is the stupid dollar generals. I mean, I'm serious. That's what makes it makes me think of. And do you... Uh, Jill. So I think there's another way to think about local options, and it doesn't have to be cheap tea towels. If you look at our latest store, is it Eco? They sell local options. They're not cheap, but they're things that I would buy online if they weren't in the store. So they're taking me downtown more often. So I think take away the cheap tea towels and just call it local options, things that people who live here need. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Michael. And the last comment, and then we'll move on. Where did Michael go? Oh, Michael, did, were you, did, did you? Sorry, I unmuted myself. Um, so yeah, no, strong supporter of, of keeping um, more local retail options as a part of one of the priorities. And, you know, anything that we can do to support keeping a dollar in Woodstock, uh, I think is, is really important. And one of the things that I think we should maybe add clarity is that we're not through this notion trying to create you know, uh, it's the idea of it is about keeping the money in the local economy to help the local economy grow. So, you know, in the dollar general scenario, that's not a dollar that stays in the local economy. So maybe we can finesse this 
in a way that can show that, you know, the intent here is to be supporting locally owned independent businesses. Very good point. And uh, th th there's, yeah, very good point. This is a point that needs to be defined, that the words mean different, can mean different things to different people. And some of the definitions of this uh, aren't what Michael and Jill are talking about. They're more what Beth and Jeff were talking about. But I think both, so I think there's further work. I happen to like, personally, I like what Jill and Michael said about keeping dollars in town. Yeah, but that, but that there is a, I'm just reflecting what I've heard over and over and over again, by the way. Uh, which isn't that we that echo is serving it's the cheap dish towels i just don't want i'm not i'm not saying what we should do john 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 you can go on for 50 forever. million hours okay. about the minutia of each of these words let's stick to the point and the point is those are outcomes right so yeah. the objective is in the sphere up top the blue right. sphere Agreed. so i think i think we get it but you know don't overthink it yeah okay fine fair enough let's move on so the last thing I want to say is, is that, and this is really, this is part of our uh, articulation of what we do, really how we do it. And this is designed to lead us to two or three of several of the discussions we have tonight, but in particular, the, the discussion about the communications platform, or we've been calling it marketing. Um, we have a whole series of tools that we can use to achieve these outcomes and these objectives. We have the communications platform, we have the website, we have the community grant program, we have the working groups, um, we have the, uh, the special tourism initiatives that we're gonna talk about at the end of this meeting to look at safety and bathrooms and parking and crowds. And we have other things that we could do as well. Um, and so a little bit later, when we talk about how to use the communications platform, the way we're going to talk about that question is not how much money do we want to spend and what vendor do we want to select? It's what outcomes do we want to use the communications platform to achieve? And I think that's the right way for us to be talking about a decision like what should we do with the communications platform? Or what should we do for housing? You know, or what should, you know? I think tonight we'll mostly focus this framework on the communications platform. And later, when we talk about the communications platform, we're going to start with this page, and then and go into a little bit more detail about how the communications platform might be used to support some of those outcomes, and which ones do we want it to use or not. So, so that's really this discussion. That's the that's the use of this framework. And we'll continue to use it, I think. For example, we're going to have a discussion not too distant from now, I hope, in the next two or three months, which is going to focus on the website. Website is another tool. We're not going to talk about that tonight. I hope we're going to talk about the website. How, how can we use the website to support these objectives or some of these objectives, some of these outcomes? So, all right. Any, any other comments about this before we leave this and go to the housing proposal? No? Okay. I, just, I do want to, I just want to say, John, that as always, we, we all really appreciate you putting this together. It's a lot of time and effort and we certainly didn't type it up and uh, thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Okay. So now back to um, the housing pro uh, proposal and uh, I'll turn it over to Jill and Trina and Jill, I can, you just tell me which page you want me to show. Okay. So we're here tonight to, to add a bit more detail to the proposal that we gave to you last month and to ask for funding, which may not go with all of the grand plans, but we need it. So I'm just going to take you through a couple of pages of the proposal and then talk about options for funding us and, um, and how that will affect us. Next one. So the first thing is that we're achieving our objective. We set out as a housing group and we set up incentive programs. We've created six homes so far and another nine are in progress. So the working group was set up with the objective of making more homes available for people working in Woodstock. And the incentive programs that we have make it more attractive for property owners and micro developers to create long-term rental homes. So it's working, 
We've got four homes rented that were not previously rented. We've got two new ADUs rent completed and rented, and we've got nine apartments in the process of construction. And since we last talked to you, there's been um, two more apartments requesting funds. Yes, so, uh, Jill, uh, this is Trina. Sorry to interrupt you. So we've got two new ADU units applications that I've just received, and we have a rental incentive application that I just received. So, um, and we have the potential for two home shares uh, application forthcoming. So, and yeah. I, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, so Trina's on Zoom, and Linda's here, and um, Lin Trina is the housing advisor. Linda's a member of the housing working group. Okay, so I just want to spend a moment on the ADUs that have been created. What's important about these two is uh, one was modification of an existing space, one was a new unit built above a garage. Have a look at the numbers that are here. The building costs are quite considerable, but the grants are huge. But the grants are coming from us and they're coming from the state and Trina makes that all happen in one go so that the net out-of-pocket costs for the um, the one on the left is 19,000. And the one on the right is a bit bigger, but that's a bigger ADU. So what we're asking for in 2024 is to make the programs more effective. And if we were fully funded, we think that could be another 32 homes available now. There's a couple of things that are pushing the urgency and the, the changes that we're proposing. Water permits are a big one. The, until we buy the water company and have a plan in place, the water company is not allowed to give any permits for new houses that depend on town water. That's huge. That could be an ADU not allowed. That is several houses already not allowed. So we need to make better use of the housing stock that we already have and get more into long-term rental. And that's why we're going to propose one of our projects right now. We want to continue to incentivize new ADUs, and we want to investigate what it will take to support larger housing developments, but you have to appreciate that larger housing developments will happen later. We need to start work now, but the, the uh, outcomes are not going to be till later. Can you just define now, because I know there was a is now meaning next week, in February 2024? Now is 2024, and recently I've been speaking to lots of employers about housing, they would say now is next month. They can't find the people from professional jobs to service jobs. There are no people. And we also have people in the community who are looking to move. And we're not looking for one bedroom units. We're looking for three bedroomed houses. And, the, and if we don't have them, we're going to lose families with children. So you can talk all you like about marketing and attracting people into the community but we need to look after the people we have here already with children. And so now means now. Well, yeah, okay, that, thank you, but that doesn't, it, it, so my question is in taking into account construction schedules, permitting and so forth, when will the last of these 32 units have someone move into them? Um, End of 2025, is that a reasonable? Yeah, so an ADU can easily take two years. Okay. Nice. Yes. So it could be even later, right? Because if you've got a new ADU request in November, Maybe they don't need their final money till 2026. I just want to set expectations yes. that that by the end we're not going to have 32 more family. We don't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You answered the question. Okay. So um, last time you asked us to put forward some options. So we've done. We've put forward together four different ones, and I actually want to talk about a, a different one now. So option A is the request that we had, which was for all our programs, and that came to $354,000. So that was the housing advisor, more money for ADU and multi-units, money for rental incentives, and a bit more money for home share programs. We've done different options. Option B is concentrating on new builds only. So that's saying, let's have the money for housing advisors and ADU and multi-units. Option C is saying, let's have a bit more money for ADU and multi-units, but let's fund the rental incentive. And then option D is the one that I really want to concentrate on today, which is to say, let's do the rental incentive program and use placemates to make this program more effective. 
So that rental incentive program says, let's take some of the housing stock we've got right now that's being used as short-term rentals and incentivize people to make that into long-term rentals. That's where the houses are. That's where the three bedrooms are. That's They've already got their water permits. They don't need to do anything. That could happen in the next six months. So that's the one we want to be asking now. And what we're asking for is funding today for the housing advisor. Our money runs out at the end of February and nothing will happen without her. We've just got inquiries about two ADUs, which look highly likely. So our money is going to run out in one or two months. So can we have a little bit more for that to keep that going? And then let's fund the rental incentive program and get going. Because if we were to fund, so if you, if you agree that today, then we've got to go to the select board. So we're still talking another month. Then we've got to do some prep work. So we're talking about nothing happening for two months, except behind the scenes. So if we really want to put something into the marketplace to work, we need to start it as soon as possible. And one more page. So we are asking to do some program enhancements as well. The one for ADU and multi-units, we currently have an incentive for 10,000. We'd love to increase that to 15,000. What happens in this, in this program is that people's property taxes go up because their property value is enhanced. And so you give with one hand and you take with the other. And ultimately, we'd like to look at tax incentive rebates, but we can't get it sorted. So in the meantime, we'd like to be doing this. Um, and then we'd also like to increase the geographic boundaries. So right now, we incentivize properties that are in Woodstock. And we've talked about this before. It's, we have a natural living communities that touch Woodstock. And so we'd like to increase the boundary of the properties that we can consider for this to an eight mile radius to town hall. So that takes in the edges of other communities that are all coming to Woodstock anyway, and which is where our workers live. Um, and then rental incentives, we want to switch from the program that we're doing right now to placemates, as I spoke about. And for home share, we'd like to increase the incentives from 500 to 1200 for the six month period. Home share is like a no brainer. It already exists. And if we can just incentivize more people to rent rooms, that can be an immediate increase as well. So I put more detail, but does anybody have any questions? Todd, Todd, go ahead. <clears throat> um, great, great presentation with coming back exactly what we asked for, in my opinion. I. I, as you know, I'm I'm challenged. So, what is a placement placement program? So, there is a um, a young company that has worked out with various towns across America how to get short term rentals into long term rentals. Oh, I remember. Okay, keep going. But I remember from the last meeting now. But we should we should reiterate th what that is. Yeah. So we're asking for. The, their the setup and administration is about 33,000 and then the grants would be grants that we'd be giving anyway to make that an, um, a $90,000 project. So we, what we'd be paying for is capacity, expertise, experience, um, and website, just kind of concentration Jim. on something new. Their website that they have too is uh, an active website with tenants and rentals. Other questions? I've got a couple, but I'll wait for other people first. Sorry. I'm, I'm confused um, with placement. Is that a part of option D or is that? In yes, it's the 87,000 in rental incentive. Okay. And the other question was, um, I asked you this, some other point, uh, another point, but, um, what does the, if you have to go to the select board to expand, is that right? We, you have to. We, we, do. we so The select board in any way yes. uh, has to uh, determine whether we can go beyond the borders of Woodstock. Yes. And if they say no, what does that do to you? 
schools. Well, before they say, just as a process point, we would have to say yes before. Yeah, yes, right? I know. Okay, assuming we said yes. Right? Yes, if, if, uh, if either we or no follows our yes, what? Right. Um, it's, it um, lessens our chances of success. So we'd have to work harder if we were only being able to work with properties in Woodstock as a we where we know that there are properties on the edges of, of um, Bridgewater and Heartland who are ready to come into the program. So perhaps it slows us down again. Would it change your dollars at all? Or your well, program? yes, um, the dollar. It doesn't change the dollar amount. It doesn't it just change changes the eligibility for the programs. Right. So it might mean you actually spend less money on grants because you have less applicants. I see. Okay. And that would be less. Well, we don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, Todd, go ahead and then I'll ask. Yeah, Larry, to, oh, sh I keep screen sharing. My... No, no, you're okay. Sorry, I keep, I don't know. If um, Larry, what's important is uh, to think about, especially with the bond for the school, is that last time we presented the select board with the option of expanding to Bridgewater and beyond, it, it was voted down through a series of events. Um, I think now with the uh, factual ammunition that that um, Jill and John would approach them, it, it might be a different outcome because of the fact of the uh, equalized pupil ratio being a topic that people have a further understanding on now than, than at that time. So it, it's it's something that we can't predict what they say, but I think that that information is compelling and, and we hadn't used that previously in our discussion with the select board when they when they initially voted on this matter. Uh, Roger, go ahead. Sorry, I was muted. Um, I just want to say that I I think you should treat this the way you treated the child care initiative and put aside as much of your funding as you possibly can. I think this is something where for the first time, I'm seeing a program that I think can actually make a big difference in this intractable problem. So, so I would encourage you to fund as much of this as you can. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, I have a couple of questions and comments. First of all, a question is if if a person who's already hooked up, if I I'm already hooked up to the water system at 16 the Green, mm. if I build an ADU in my lawn. I, the, will the water company be allowed to serve me? I think they will, but I, it's actually Stuart Matthews is on the call. Maybe he might, or if you know the answer, Joe, but Stuart might know. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer. I believe the answer is they would be able to serve you. Yeah. Except I think it's, that, so Mellish Woods is asking for four extra units and they're not allowed to go ahead. So I'm not sure we know. But, but, yes, it, it, it's a good point, Stuart. Do you have any anything yeah. you can add to that, Stuart, or not? I don't. Okay. Um, I, to me, by the way, the rental and the the, the uh, attractiveness of the rental incentive program, in my view, goes up if the answer. It, it, it's good anyway. I, I like it, but it but it goes up higher if the a, if the answer to the question is no that, yes. that these ADUs that we're currently incenting are being blocked. So that's something that we really find out. The could find out. Um, and in fact, I think it actually may affect our our funding. Um, because adding more money, I mean, if, if literally they can't, you're not allowed to hook it up, then then we're, if we do, I would still be in favor of the ADU program because it's working and it's expanding capacity, not just replacing some one type of owner or, or, or occupant with another. So the best thing we can do is to build more buildings, but it might be that people can't move into them until the water situation is resolved. On the other hand, if it takes two years to build an ADU, I think the water situation is going to be resolved in that time. So, um, I have another point. It has to do with the expansion beyond the eight mile radius. Uh, that has, I presume, you, you mentioned that there are other other outside of Woodstock that communities are, are well are you know willing to come in. Who who wouldn't be willing? They basically are going to get money from Woodstock taxpayers all of the financial benefit other than the employees, the financial benefit of having built that house is going to go into property tax revenue to those towns. I presume they haven't offered to give us a share of that revenue when we build, help to build a house in their town with our dollars. No. Right. But so, we would get the benefit of a Woodstock worker because we would, it's restricted it would. to only Woodstock. Right. Workers. So what I would suggest is that we, 
my suggestion would be that we consider when we consider voting on this that we vote on this separately with the we vote on the program separately from the eight mile radius question i would vote against the eight mile radius question and i would continue to vote against it until we run out of of opportunities in woodstock and then i would consider it uh because i it, it is um yeah because the 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 uh for that for, well that, that's my opinion um the last well, I want to. I want to. I want to talk at the end about when we should make this decision. Um, I I do think that housing is an extreme priority. It's not. I think it's probably fair to say it's not an equal priority, or at least some people here think it's not an equal priority. It's a significant priority. By some people, I don't mean you, Jill. I mean on the EDC. Equal it's to what? to the other priorities. Oh. It's perhaps more pressing, more central. It's like childcare was. I think some people feel that way. I'm not sure how I feel. I might feel that way. If you do, if you disagree with that it is a priority, just go talk to some employers. Uh, no, I understand. Yeah. No, it's clearly, anyway. So I just want to end the discussion by making a point about how much funds we have available, mm -hmm. what it would mean in order to approve option D now, which is doable. And, and I think it would mean mm -hmm. that we would be saying that this priority really sits above the others, which could make a lot of sense if we that's what we think. Um, because it will preclude us from, it might, it may preclude us from doing, well, it will preclude us from doing some other things, I think. Uh, so last comments then from EDC members, and then we'll talk about funding availability. Marion first and then Todd. Can you, um, just from, from a dollars and cents point of view, I know a couple of these have, um, funds carried over. Can you just, I, I remember that, but it would be helpful for me to um, hear that breakdown again of sort of like what's what's already allocated and what's new and and what, what are we asking for as opposed to the carried over funds? Hey, Trina, can you do that? Yes. Okay. So if we're um, looking at option D, uh, 40,000, I think uh, is understood, but as far as the ADU multi-unit and um, the new units. Right now we have $30,000 for ADU and multi-units that would roll over, but I just received two applications. So if those are approved, which I don't see why they wouldn't be in our housing meeting this month, and then I'll bring them forward to uh, the EDC in March, then that leaves us with ten thousand dollars. So one more. All right, but what I'm trying to understand, and maybe overly simplistic, but it, when you say you have thirty carrying over, are you asking for thirty more, or are you asking for sixty more? That's what I'm trying to understand. You're asking for uh, exactly what's written on the slide with option what's D. What's written here? Sixty more. Okay. Okay. Sixty Got more. It. So you're yes. asking for sixty more. Thank yeah. you. For and then that will add okay. to the ten that we have uh, Perfect. now. Perfect. Well, Thank you. Now, the well, I. So while I mentioned that to you, I think it's important for everyone to know that after these applications are done, at least this is one unit of funding left um, based off a, a timing of end of February. And then the rental incentive will only have $400 left. So basically with these new applications, I will uh, we will have exhausted all of our prior funding and it's been allocated out there at that point. So that's why getting funding now is in, important to me um, and to the community so that I can continue marketing and pushing it forward and not uh, kind of stall in place until the funding's approved. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that for me. That's great work that you've yeah. gone burning through all Thank that. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate Todd. it. Todd. So um, one thing that this is sort of just an FYI, you may already mm -hmm. know, but for Stuart and, and Jill and et al., um, the places that don't have water, they if they had the possibility of a well at their location, they can do a public water supply, which we've done in Tassville. Um, mm -hmm. It's not cheap, but it's completely a fantastic way to generate water usage based on calculations. And the, the folks that do it are the Vermont Agency of Natural Resources, the Vermont Department of Environmental Con Conservation. Mm -hmm. So they people might not know, but um, it becomes an actual water supply with the same rules and regulations as the town water from the uh, you know the 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 folks who provide it. So it's 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 possible if they can get access to a well to solve that problem. You should look into it, perhaps. Are you saying drill a well? Yes, if you make yeah. a well, you can make a public water supply. Taskville yeah. 
store has a public water supply that has the same rules and regulations as yeah. the the Woodstock Aqueduct Company. Now we don't have pipes running all over the place because we don't need to do that. But in terms of testing, quality, uh, capacity output, storage, um, these are all things that don't need to be done by a large corporation necessarily. I, I, I think it probably costs us low six figures to create this um, at the Tasville store, but but it is we could we could ostensibly run pipes to a house across the street with the permission of the two boards I mentioned and be an extended water supply. It's the same set of rules and regulations for yeah. the quality uh, and transmission. Hey, Todd, how much did you say that cost or did you? Low, low, low six figures. OK, wow. OK, thank so you. Prob probably not. Yeah, not. All right, other Todd, comments. do you want to Todd? Do you want to buy the water company? Do you want to get involved right. in the water business? I'm trying to get my credit card limit increased. I will let you know what they say. All right. Um, other comments or questions? All right, uh, Deb. Sorry, go ahead. If it, it, it actually is about the eight mile thing that you were talking about, John, um, because it just occurred to me when you were saying like you know, to kind of go to expand it when we're done, when we run out of options. But I just, I feel like the way that things are coming to the housing group, it's not like we, they run out. It's, you know, new things come periodically. I don't think it's a run out scenario. Um, and I think obviously the more we do in town, the better for us economically. And I think the more people that know that they're doing it and, and can incentivize other people to do it, I get that, but I just, I don't know if it's worth uh, waiting on that, you know, until we quote run out of options. I think we are, I think we have to look at all options that, you know, kind of on a rolling basis, unless I'm not getting it clearly. Am I, Trina, am I seeing it correctly or not? I, I think you are. Yeah. I mean, basically, you know, if we had applicants here in Woodstock that wanted to do it, now they would, but I think some people have concerns with the water and some other things that are going on right now to be able to make those decisions. But I will say that funding now is important because people are planning for construction and work to do in the summer. So, um, and the eight mile radius just opens up the breadth of the program to include um, other properties that maybe we only join now that we don't have available in Woodstock. Sorry, just correct me if I'm wrong. But I also think Sorry, but I also think, John, what you were saying about involving the other communities, just like we were talking about other things that do that yesterday or the other day when we were we were all together, to involve other communities and in incentivizing them or, or getting some sort of tax coming back to us um, makes a lot of sense as well. So I'm not negating that. I'm just, I'm just looking at the timing. That's my question. I, I, okay, I just, I think, I think it is a basic fact as Trina has just emphasized on the one hand, that all of our ADU incentives from all come from Woodstock because that's the only thing we incentivize and yeah. we've run out of money. And unless we give more money for ADUs, we will be slowing down progress, which presumably <laughs> means we think that there's more demand from Woodstock. My only suggestion, since I think the likelihood of, of the select board passing the eight mile radius is um, mathematically zero, it, it might be 0.1%, but I, okay. I, I think it's a waste of our time at this point when we can't, when, when, when they will say what I'm saying, have we run out of capacity in Woodstock? And the answer is no, factually, the opposite is true. We have used up all of our capacity and we had recent demand in the last month. If we have the same demand in March that we had in February, we will not be able to serve Woodstock. Uh, that we until we have an until we have an argument for that, it seems to. And by the way, as soon as we have an argument for that, we should propose <laughs> the eight mile radius. But I don't think we do. And in, okay, unless, I just needed clarity. I understand. That's, that's my point of view. Yeah. By the way, yeah. I'm suggesting no, we, vote, we vote on that separately tonight or whenever we vote on it. And so if mm -hmm. if the rest of you don't agree, I'll I will represent. Obviously, when we go to the select board, I'm going to represent what the EDC is saying, not what I'm saying. So I'm just arguing with them. So. Uh, um, Beth, Beth, go ahead. Yeah, I just have a really quick question for Jill. I I think the place may sounds great. I know the Truckee Tahoe area fairly well, and 
So, I, but I just wanted clarification. So right now it's a $33,000 admin fee for them. And then does that only leave $44,000 for the incentives? 54. 54. Well, that's, that's right, 54. So it's $5,000 a unit? Um, so the total cost is in the proposal detail. Is it in this document, Jill? Is it yes. Yeah. Yes, we have some. <laughs> Here it is. Yes, it's five thousand per unit according to this slide, and that's what they say is for one year. Yes, but the the point is that. From their experience, more than 50% of people who take their money for year one renew with the long-term renter for year two without any extra incentive. Um, and it's 33500 and that includes 2000 for promotion. Oh, I, I, the, the, the point that I, the context, the financial context in which we would, wait, sorry, I just want to go back. Where, the options disappear? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here's the financial context in which we'd make this decision. We, in 2023, our revenue was 370000 2022 was 380000 By the way, in, in 2015, it was 210000 or 2016. So just to be clear, it's up 55% or 60%. Um, in my head, I've been, you know, th there are the most recent forecast that I've seen for GDP growth in 2024 is one and a half percent slower growth in 2024 than 2023, um, with some recession risk in the U S you know, there was some in 2023 too, and it didn't happen. So in my mind, I'm thinking we have, and remember, we don't have any reserves now. We have cash, but we don't have any unencumbered funds. We enter the year with zero, essentially zero, maybe ten or fifteen thousand of unencumbered funds. The rest of our funds have been promised to people. We have some cash because they haven't all taken it, but it's been promised. In my mind, I think about three hundred fifty thousand. It's a little bit conservative, maybe. If we have a significant problem like COVID, in COVID it went down to two twenty. So just to give you a sense of kind of what the floor might be. But if it's a normal year, I think it's, I think I'm thinking of 350. Here's the demand that we have, that we can see. We haven't received, the housing group is out ahead. They've got a fully developed proposal for these different amounts of money, which by the way, I want to say, this is fantastic. This is what we've been striving for, to have multiple fully well-developed proposals on things that are in our priority areas, whether it's housing or marketing. <laughs> We've already done childcare. You're about to hear for downtown rejuvenation. So we've got 70,000 that we've already encumbered for the community grant program. If we were to do the 187,000, uh, I'm just gonna round it to 190. We're talking about that's 260 or 255. We know that there's going to be a proposal. We're, we're going to talk about how much money to put against marketing, but in the last year we put a hundred thousand dollars. That's three hundred and sixty. We have what I think is a credible outline of a proposal for sixty thousand dollars from downtown rejuvenation. That's four hundred and twenty. And there hasn't been a proposal yet about the website. We don't know whether we can and so forth do it, but there's but there's been thinking and a desire to put forward a proposal on the website sometime this year if the chamber and the and EDC can agree on what that would be. And that might be, that's tens of, it's not hundreds of thousands, but it's not thousands. It's 20,000 or 30,000 or, I mean, it's that order of magnitude, 30,000. So that's sort of 450,000. I think we, if we don't vote on the housing advisor today, we will stop work before our next meeting. Um, 
personally, I would argue this program, I think you've seen evidence of it. I, you know, I, I would argue that's a bad decision. We should continue the housing advisor program because we're going to continue the housing program. The question is only how much can we afford? So I think we definitely need to vote on that. If we did vote on option D tonight or some version of it, um, it, it, it would mean we would need to scale back or not do some of those other things. Um, I think there's an argument that housing is more important than some of those other things. I think there's an argument that all of those things are important. <laughs> That's why we put them on our priority list. So I, I, I'm not sure, to be honest, what, you know, I, I'd love to be able to find a way. I think we will have next month a good proposal from the downtown rejuvenation group, more detailed than what you've seen so far. And, you know, a, a vetting of that and basically a, a proposal that says, look, this is really what we want to do this year. This is what we think makes sense. I think we will have the same thing for marketing slash communications over the next, by the, by, at the latest, by the end of March and possibly by the end of February, depending on tonight's discussion and what we have subsequently. I don't think we will have a concrete proposal, or I don't know, I don't think we'll have a concrete proposal for the website during that period of time. It might take us longer, and that's a small amount of money. So that's kind of where we stand. Um, how do we want to proceed in terms of voting? Todd? Yeah, I know it's it's not traditional per se, but why can't, if, if housing's come to us and presented four options, which really they're only presenting option D because they hope we say yes, and I appreciate that. Um, why can't we just vote on it and talk about the schedule of those funds and then have a clawback provision based on performance that we can then put into effect uh, based on other things that might come up like downtown rejuvenation. So we can, we can, we can plan on a D and then again, you're better at this than me, all of you, but maybe we need to change our tact a little, let people hit the ground running with a proposal that works. Time is money. Time is value. Uh, try to try to get this money spent because we know when this money is spent it has a, an enormous impact on the community. Um, but if they can't spend it, have a quicker way to to reduce it to uh, less desirable D dash one, perhaps whatever that might be, uh, because downtown rejuvenation came in with something great. So example would be, look, OK, in three months you get we're looking at these funds in three months, uh, you have X amount of units to proportionally get and if not we may potentially based on other proposals claw back x you know some it sounds messy because uh, this isn't my forte but I, I think we can find a way to give people the tools to be successful and if they are successful not worry about penalizing it's good town business uh, but if they aren't find a faster way to re-encumber the funds um for for other things that might come in that are that are shovel ready like something great in downtown or whatnot but if it takes downtown four months should housing suffer and how do we vote on that? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, it's a very good suggestion. I think we definitely can do that. Um, the, the constraints on that, which don't preclude us doing a version of that, are that the rental incentive, the 87,000 is a, is a, it's a, it's a one year, they, we have to sign a one year contract. Yeah. So we can't, we can't do it with that. We could do it with the 60,000. Uh, we could claw some of that back because, and by the way, if, if they were to get six ADUs in the next month, I think we would be happy, not upset. Um, we could give Trina, I suppose, a, I mean, this is sort of not the kind of thing you want to talk about in an open meeting, but but we could give her a six month contract, you know, or, you know, but although, you know, we want to have continuity and longevity is important in people if i was an employee you know that wouldn't be the best thing so i mean if we had if we had if we had d part one housing advisors sold because it's it's business that has to continue with existing projects and we had rental incentive year contract not unlike we had the marketing and then perhaps we consider the delta could come from adu multi-unit if we need right. it uh based on supply and demand at a certain date um that that would that would be great I think as a way to potentially move forward. And I'm curious what other people think about, about that exact 60,000 Delta because they already yeah. have 30,000 in the hopper. Yeah. Marion, that's understood. Well, I was just going to say, I think one, you know, I think I, I'm, I, I would not want to um, do like a six month 
contract. I think I think Trina has proven uh, the worth of the housing advisor. Even, even th there are so many things that are not represented in the projects here um, in terms of just um, the support she's given. And it's probably just the, the unrecognized work is probably also increased housing capacity. So I, I wouldn't I feel like that's a that's actually more proven than than some of the others in terms of the the impact. Yep. Okay. Other comments? Those are both those are all good points. Uh, but by the way, I, I totally could just for what it's worth. I was making a mathematical point about the forty thousand. Legally, we could do it. I, I totally agree with Marion's comment about the value of the work being done. Um, other comments? Yeah, I just wanted to just raise my hand on that too, because I just think if you have a working program and you have somebody who's working it, we don't want to limit them. Okay, so so, we're, so what we're so what in effect what Todd's suggestion is is uh, is should we put on the table option D with something less than sixty with either sixty thousand our intention, but to be to be spent as it is spent, or are we going to say you know? Don't go past thirty thousand or some amount without coming back to us and mm -hmm. checking something of that sort. I, that's what you're sort of suggesting, Todd. That's yeah, whatever is administratively easier. I mean, at the end of the day, like what, what's important, and, and you already touched on it. We all, we all have is if this was spent today, and Trina and Jill came in and said, "Look, we're asking for every dollar you have, and we have these applications, and this is well, we wouldn't have any money to spend, and we wouldn't have much to talk about or debate, right?" So it's really about encumbering these funds, the schedule release of those funds, and how that works vis-a-vis -vis the other programs, which are really important to the town too. So I, I would stress any good idea you all can come up with, I would support that allows us to let these folks go full steam ahead, but also understand that if someone comes in in the meantime, we have a certain place that we can go to and say, look, you know, this amount of time has been passed and we're going to go in this direction with this delta. All right, well, does someone want to make a, a I mean, I, I, I could make a motion. Does someone else want to make a motion? Could, could I ask one more question? Yeah. To slow us down. Um, I, I would just love to hear from Jill or Trina if they felt like there was there was some unintended negative consequence of, of working in that way that we hadn't thought of. And, and maybe there isn't, but I just want to give them the opportunity to speak to that. Um, no, we'd actually debated this beforehand. We can come and ask for any extra money that we need as we get people asking for them except for the rental incentive program and trina uh, so i think we could make this work it wouldn't hold anything up we'd keep going and then we'd come to you when we run out of money oh well and if that's the case then i agree with that okay if that that's a great question marion and a great answer my suggestion then is that we go to the select board with option d and explain to them that we would like them to delegate to the EDC the timing and the release of the 60,000, that we intend to release it as applicants come, but that over the next X months, we are making other important decisions and that may that may change. And if if that's the case, we will come if we do obviously they they'll have to approve those allocations and some of that might come from the six from what's remaining of the sixty thousand. In which just, the select board, up to sixty thousand. Just yeah. tell them we'd want to do up, up to sixty thousand. Right, exactly. John, the only question on that is in the past we've given them like, you know, very specific instructions on what to vote on. And we you're asking them a question about what no, no, we've I, debated. No, 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 no. I we will ask them for approval to spend up to sixty thousand, and they've they've they've, they've, they've approved up twos before. Yeah, That's I got it. you. I got you. Yeah. So that I think gives as long as the the housing group has said they can work, that that means that we just have to work. It's just between us and the housing group, not the housing group, right. us and the select board. And then we'll yeah. So. That's right, well, great. Make, Would you type in the chat how to word that? You know, so someone can say it. Well, I'll <laughs> say I'll, I'll say that the I'll make a motion. That we fund the housing program for one hundred and eight for uh, forty thousand dollars for the housing advisor, eighty seven thousand dollars to run a one year test on the rental incentive program, and up to an additional sixty thousand additional, uh, and up to sixty thousand dollars 
on ADUs with each of the ADU programs needing to come back, to, as it always does to the full EDC, uh, we hope to be able to fund all of them. Uh, that's Second. It. Second. Uh, is there further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any non-video EDC members? I don't think so. Any opposed? Okay. Great. Congratulations. Great. Great Thank job. You. Yeah. Well, Thank you very done. much. Now May I ask one more question? Yeah. So we had suggested various enhancements. It would be nice to clarify whether those we should go ahead with those. Sorry, that's actually a really important point. Um, so mm -hmm. could we vote on each of the enhancements yes. separately? I'm going to say that if it's if after the fact, does anyone object to that vote? If anyone objects, we will revote that that vote is to the unenhanced program. There are two enhanced. Then is everyone OK with that? We just approve the base program, if I call it that. And now we're going to vote on the two enhancements. Does anyone object? OK, so we'll rewrite history. That's what we voted on. Now the two enhancements are. So one is to increase the incentive per unit for an ADU or multi unit for te from 10,000 to 15,000. Can I suggest that that not be applied to the current applicants because they applied under the old incentive? Trina, how does that work? Uh, their applications are for the existing program, which is 10,000. The 15,000 has not been documented anywhere or presented to anybody. So yes, correct. The new applicants are 10,000. Okay. The ones I have in my pocket right now. Right. Yeah. All right, so I, I will make a motion to mm -hmm. allow us to increase the incentive from 10,000 to 15,000. Second. Is there any discussion of this? I can I ask a question? If we are getting more applicants at ten thousand, why do we need to increase it to fifteen thousand? Because we want more. We want more, and we want them faster. It, 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 uh, Michael. So I actually I didn't vote in favor on the last one. I didn't vote against. I I'm kind of abstaining from my vote on on that first vote. Um, Oh, I'm sorry about that. I, I didn't know. It's that. okay. It's okay. And, and the thing is now that I'm getting, what I'm getting concerned about is we're going to be spinning a lot of uh, dials and not able to tell necessarily which dial is being impactful, which um, is kind of my point of concern on like also increasing this and changing it to an eight mile radius. We're, we're throwing a lot of money at the problem. And I don't know that that's giving us a clear point of view on what, from where we sit as an EDC, what's being the most impactful. Uh, okay, thank you. I, now just a point of order. I think this is a point of order. Because it was not unanimous, I didn't realize that. We need to take a, um, what is it called? A roll. A roll call vote. So the prior vote is now not correct. So we need first to vote on the program before the increased incentives. Oops. By, by a roll call vote. Oh, you need to vote okay. on option D. Are we going to vote on option D? As I as I stated it, it's just the same yeah. thing as I stated before. But we just need to re-vote on it and we need to take a roll call vote. I don't think you need to re-vote. You just need to take a oh, okay. We need to take a roll call vote. Yeah. So, Larry. All right. John, yes. Greta. Yes. Todd. Yes. Michael. Still going to abstain. Okay, Deborah. Yes. Marion. Yes. Okay. All right. So now um, I'll then make a motion to increase the, I'm not sure I'm going to vote for this, but I'll, the motion is I'll make a motion to increase the incentive from 10,000 to 15,000. Um, Michael, are you, I mean, I, I have some question about that as well. If we are getting. I need a second. Oh, sorry. Is there a second? Second. Motion? Okay. Further discussion. Um, I can. I can just. Anyone else have a concern about it? I just. I, I have a question about it. Yeah, go ahead. And then talk. Um, you know, just talking about what you were saying that you have some applicants who are coming in at ten, and then I, I'm just thinking how they're going to feel, you know, when a week later it, it gets up to fifteen. Um, I think that's a complicated thing to do. Um. And and are you and also I'm just wanting to know understand um, 
is it also, or is it that you're doing it because you're not getting enough and you have heard from people that they would do it if we would incentivize more? Um, so in regard to, is it complicated? It's what happens in retail sales every day, prices go down. So I think you just manage it and the person making the application decides what when they're coming in. And then, yes, we have heard from people concerned about the property tax levels being in. Great. Thank you. I just want to thank you. Got it. But sorry, again, just to go back to the fact that the program is as under the current incentive is fully subscribed. That's why we need more funding. Yes. OK. So, I mean, it strikes so, me that for a fully subscribed until the program isn't fully subscribed, it seems to me we could get more units by keeping the incentive the same. I think actually, if we want more unit, that, that's I, I the the you know. The, so anyway, how, Todd, how many fewer? Yeah, I look fewer. I mean, Fifteen thousand. So yeah. we're keeping in context a town that has no water, no school, no place for your poop and pee to go, and no restaurants to generate the poop and pee. <laughs> okay, you can you can understand that we're spending significant capital to improve the situation for our townsfolk and visitors alike, right? It's obvious. So when we go to something like this, it's, I, I would beg to differ anyone who says it's not clearly measurable. And when we're talking about a $5,000, which is a 50% increase in this incentive, but when we're talking about rolling this on and keeping it going, it's no different than Elon Musk, everyone's favorite person, lowering the price of the car. Well, sorry if you bought it last week and it was different. It's your choice as a consumer what to do. But certainly I can imagine more people at 15,000, maybe myself included, might be interested in this where we weren't at the 10,000 number. But regardless, either the program is being utilized and applications are coming in, being accepted and housing's being created, new housing, by the way, that did not exist before, or it isn't. So there is a direct measure. Now, if you want to talk about dollars and cents and really say, well, should this cost 80 cents or a dollar or three dollars? That's a different program. I don't think that we're sitting here pinching pennies. I don't think we're throwing shit at the wall and just hoping it works. We're, we're a great body of diverse people from different entrepreneurial and otherwise backgrounds. But we're talking about a modest amount of money to potentially increase quite a few folks who aren't expanded in that eight mile radius that John, you don't think the select board 0.0001% is going to go for. So let's not handicap it. Let's let it go. And if the applications don't come in, the money won't be spent anyway. So I really strongly feel that this amount of money, when we're talking about a TEDx or, you know, whatever we else fund, right. Things that are important in the community don't, don't shy away and really try to, make sure that the end result is, was it $3,000 a unit or $3,250? We need that unit within reason. I think this is a reasonable mm -hmm. area right. of increased uh -huh. spending. All right, let me respond. I'm arguing for six units, to add six units, not four. We've just voted for $60,000. If, if we increase the incentive to $15,000, we'll get four units. If we leave it at $10,000, we may or may not get six units. What, what, I, would, what I would be happy to increase to to increase the incentive to 15,000 the first time we have three months or two months without any applications. And I think why, we're what, saying, we're why, saying, why wait, wait that long? Why wait that long? Because I don't think it's going to ever happen. It's not, what do you mean that long? It, I, it, what, why every, you, every, every, if it takes two years to build these things or one year, do you get someone's, the, the process, the time, the, the capital loss on one family not moving here, Far trumps, and I hate using that we're, word, the, the $5,000 increase in my we're not, opinion. We're not going to lose as soon as... Could, could we ask a real question? Could we just ask Trina and Jill, have you lost any applications? Because they, they like, do you have a sense of, are there people that said 10,000 is not enough? Or are there people who were like, oh, I wish it was a little more, I would do it? Like, what is your sense that's guiding you in this? Uh, gut feel and... The fact that the two ADUs that are now completed have used state money, um, considerable state money, that program is on pause now. Okay. So our well, program at 10,000 was, was a drop in the bucket, but it worked because we got people hit, hooked up with the state program okay. that isn't there right now. All right, so I think we've got um, arguments. So let's let's take a yeah. vote on, on, on this uh, one. Can I, can, can I add something uh, uh, based off actual data? Um, 
So the last applicant that we received for an ADU was Sean Byrne, and that was back in, when the program first started in 2022, and he finished it last year. So we hadn't had any new applications for ADUs since then. So they 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 applied when we first presented the programs, and we had several applicants, but not a lot of new ones there. And then last year we it's multi units uh, the new one. Hold on, yeah, I'm getting there. The and then last year we uh, released the multi unit program, and we had a couple of people jump on that immediately. Um, the the date of that last applicant was uh, well, it was earlier this year. So, and one of them hasn't even begun signing the contract, so we're still waiting on that. But that you know, um, so there has been a slump in new activity. That's why I was excited to get these two new ones from Shab uh, Oddsley. So. Uh, I'm confused. Are we getting new applications at ten thousand per unit? We've just got two new ones, but prior to that, we haven't had anything for many, many months. Right. Correct. Okay. All right. We have the. We have. I think a good set of the information. Let's. Let's. Um, are there any other comments, or can we vote on this? Uh, really quick. We're still saying no matter what, they have to come back and ask us for increases. Maybe this is tied to it too, and we find a happy medium where it's X amount of ten, and then we push it up if it's not successful. So maybe we bridge the gap there somewhere. We, we cannot. Well, that's. I think what we're voting on is to increase it now rather than waiting we can increase it tomorrow morning if we have a special meeting so I, i'm that's what i'm going to vote for but uh, sorry i don't mind would, would, if we don't increase it now that doesn't mean we can't increase it later but we may want to increase it now so let's just take a vote i think we have all the arguments out so i'll go I'm, on the if i'm still confused do you do you have uh, a feeling that there are people that came uh, were interested in this that the five thousand dollars would have made a substantive difference in their decision um, I don't know that 5,000 is ever going to make a substantial difference. I hope that with the information that we can put forward now from the two case studies that we've written up, plus a bigger number, that would increase things, but I don't know. You haven't had that experience where they've said, if this isn't enough, I, we need we've had the dollars more. We've, no, we've had the experience of people who got 10,000 saying, oh my goodness, and now property taxes, what's going to happen there? And if that starts spreading, then that's going to the the aunt. What's really happening is we're giving less than ten thousand. We're giving ten thousand less your prop, in, property tax increase, and I don't really want to do that. All right, let's. We, we need to move on. So let's, let's go to. I'll do the people on. Uh, well, sorry, we can. Um, well, I need to ask for abstain. So all in favor. Uh, What's the motion right. exactly? Oh, sorry, the motion is to increase the incentive from ten thousand to fifteen thousand for ADU and multi-unit ADU, whatever the name of that ADU and multi-units. All in favor? AI or raise your hand. Actually, if you're on the one, two, all, right. all opposed. One, two, three, four, five. Anyone abstaining? No. Right, correct. So we don't need to have a roll call. Okay. So uh, come back to us as right. when when you need to, as soon as you need to. All right. Increasing the geographic boundary to an eight mile radius. I, I, can I say that we've already had enough discussion about that, and we just simply have a vote? Is anyone opposed to? Is, is there, sorry, uh, I'll make the motion to increase the geographic boundary to an eight mile radius to town hall. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Yeah. Does there need to be further discussion, or can we just vote on this? Can I ask one one question? Yeah. Um, is there any negative, like it sounds, if I understood it correctly, the reason that we didn't want to vote for this was that the select board might turn it down. Is there any negative impact to us voting for it and then um, them turning it down? Well, sorry, I, I, can I dispute the premise of your question? <laughs> It's how I understood it too, for the record. Okay, you, sorry. you can. I mean, I understand I'm that opposed, that's not the I'm only reason. To, I, I, I understand that's not the right. I, I'm opposed to this because it's Woodstock. I'm opposed to this because this is Woodstock tax dollars, and I believe that there are opportunities that we get multiple benefits when we build something. We increase the tax base of Woodstock that has multiple. I'd rather have that extra property taxes go to us than to someone else because I think that it's our tax because I think we can use it. How about we? How about we tag on? It has to have a school-aged child as part of the renter. 
And that's the opposed that's that's the opposing argument. And then another argument for it is we get a Woodstock worker and we desperately need them. Yeah. Correct. I think the need is so dire that I, you know, I would I would the need for housing is so so severe and dire that I would be willing to risk the yeah. on our I, property tax. I would like to put forward that the renter either live or work in Woodstock and has a child or has to be in Woodstock then, if you want to compromise on that. This is not a renting program. This is a construction program. The, the, the person that, the person, they're going to lease it to someone though, right? And, and that, that person has to be has to work qualified. Already. It has to be a Woodstock resident currently yes. in Woodstock, right? A Woodstock worker. The renter right? has to work in Woodstock. Yeah. So yeah. I'm saying if we go, I would be in favor going outside saying, hey, if you're going to go outside and take this money, it has to be someone that has a family that has children that go to school in the district. Okay. Or that, work side, yeah. For what period, right. yeah. And for what length of time, just because someone will ask, is it? For, the for, one year minimum, right, Trina? No, no, I mean, but how long does it have to be rented to a, a Woodstock? Oh, for one year? Is it, is it one year? Uh, no, it's three it years. It's three years for an ADU. Um, the, one kid, $60,000, there you go. They have to rent it for three years. Okay, it doesn't really, a child doesn't really work for an ADU program because we're talking about studios and one bedrooms primarily. So I don't, I wouldn't want to add that constraint. I'm just it's trying to figure out idea. a way to make a compromise here, but yeah. you, know, but, you know what I mean? I, I understand what John's That's saying, I don't agree with it. So, but I want to, I want to explain the radius too, but we know the select board's very against it. I, I just, I, the only we reason- do, I, We don't, we know that the select sorry. board 12 months ago was very against it. That's we haven't true. approached the select board. Sorry, I That's withdraw, true. it is not a reason for, it is absolutely not a reason for us to vote against this because we think the select board is doing it. And my only reason for making this comment that I made a moment ago is that's not the reason I'm opposed to this. So take that out of the equation. It's, I, I withdraw that comment. It's not relevant. I'm well, John, you know it has to be a Woodstock worker for three years. I do know that. I'm a, anyway, I'm, I'm simply clarifying that, that. Can I add to that? Yes. Deborah, go okay. Ahead. So it's someone who is a Woodstock worker or has a child that's in the system. So they could be working elsewhere, but as long as the child's in the system, that works? Or does that not work for your program, Trina? It does not work because the incent the the reason for the program is to increase housing for Woodstock workers. Right. I got you, but 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 we're talking about John's concern about adding and Todd adding someone, you know, to our school system, which ends up being money. But um, so that doesn't work. Okay. Yeah, and I think uh, Deborah, that's a good question, y'all. But uh, I think uh, the ADU, the very premise of an ADU is most likely it's going to be a couple or one person, just because those are small. Yeah, I got be a single parent and their child though we don't we don't we don't yeah, exactly. can't find a place to live you're gonna is it a procedural thing that we can't go and put a school uh child in this is, is it a moot point do we need to keep talking about it or can we do it um i believe when i posed the question to the attorney before on this was on the rental incentive program that putting some type of a, a child or a, a bonus for a child wasn't something that he was real keen on. It was okay if I called it a uh, another uh, qualified resident. So if you want to call it a qualified resident, then maybe we could make something work. But I can't, I don't think by law I can say child. Then, I, then if that's the fact, then based on this, I think Woodstock needs saturation before we expand then, personally. Although we still have, I mean, the original, the original motivation for this program was that our our local businesses were telling us that one of their greatest concerns is they can't staff their businesses. And one of the reasons is that there isn't any place for those workers to live. And so this program would be for anyone who works in Woodstock. And so it would solve that problem, even if they lived in the next town. So to work with John's issue then, which is actually my issue is now I've, I've come on to that place. What if we have an incentive that we propose in the eight mile radius that the part that's outside of Woodstock be for a lesser amount because housing's cheaper so that they're not taking advantage of the town people's money when okay. we send it out of boundaries. What if we do something like that? Well, if, if you, I can make yeah. a comment on your premise, housing isn't any cheaper in these neighboring towns anymore. Renting so an apartment in Woodstock ever. is not the same as renting an apartment in Bridgewater. I can tell you that. I know plenty of people that rent. 
It's not the same. Uh, I've got somebody in Bridgewater so Corner. I'm not going to argue, but look at the average. You don't have to argue because I'm proposing something to try to help you. So let's work with that. All right. Uh, can I? This is. Um, we need to. We need to move on on the agenda. I think since we haven't, I'm going to keep the motion the same, and I'm going to suggest that if the motion passes, fine, we'll present it to the select board. If it doesn't pass, that we continue to work on this issue. It doesn't, it, you know, it, that we we don't we can we can deal with this issue again next month as a modification to the program or the month after. We're, we're doing this problem solving in real time is we, we, there is some problem solving perhaps that could okay. that could so let's just have a vote on this. So, so the motion is to increase the geographic boundaries of the ADU and multi-unit program to an eight mile radius to town hall, period. So um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Two. All those opposed say nay. 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 Okay, I don't, uh, so sorry, say the nay again. I didn't see. Nay. One, two, three, four, five, Larry, six. No. And we have seven here. So there weren't there two people who voted yay? Yeah. I Marion voted for yay. So so I think two yay and five nay. Okay. And no any abstaining? No. Okay. So we will consider this. Okay. Feel free to come back and we'll Place consider mates. this. Yeah, this play do you want to vote on separately on placemates, which is implement the placemate program? No, I think we already that was okay. part of our first. And then the last one is to increase the incentive for home share from five hundred to twelve hundred dollars for six months. Um, actually, Jill, scroll back to the option D. Do we have home share on there? No, no. but we've got ten thousand in the kitty for it, and we'd like to spend that money differently. Correct. Okay, okay. so that just wasn't on the it wasn't a bullet point on the slide of incentives. Right, did everyone hear that? It's just, it's not on this page here. We have ten thousand. Oh, sorry, it is. It's at the bottom. We have ten thousand dollars in the home share program right now. We've been offering a five hundred incentive for six months. We'd like to increase that to twelve hundred to make to make this program work. It hasn't been working. Right. Okay. Is it, uh, I'll make that motion to increase the incentive from five hundred to twelve hundred for six months as a test. Is there any discussion of that? Uh, all I, right. Sorry, Deb. Go ahead. I think I need to abstain because I'm I'm trying to help out some people and put people in my house. So I okay. think I need to abstain, right? I, if you're a potential applicant yeah. for that, if you're in the process, yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? Um, we need five people. Now we have six. There's been no second. Yeah. Is there, sorry, is there a second? I, I seconded it. I don't know if you heard me. Okay. Sorry, I did not. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Or actually, raise your hand so I can see. Me, Michael, Marion, Greta, um, uh, Larry, uh, I'm going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. Are you, this is to increase the incentive for home share from 500 to 1,200. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, wasn't in. That was the last change to the program. The, the program is it's, really working at 500 basically and it's using money that we have in the kitty already. we have already we have ten thousand dollars allocated to it okay so I, there's four people who have said yes three two people haven't voted and you i would say yes to that so five yeses i'm sorry it's it's not new funding it's just a reallocation of the use of the funds correct yes. it's already been funded i go to i go to an i all right it's i any opposed and any abstaining? Yeah, okay. Uh, we need to have a roll call vote. Larry? Yes. John? Yes. Uh, Greta? Yes. Todd? Yes. Deb? Abstaining. Abstaining. Michael? Yes. Marion? Yes. Okay, that motion passes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Great Thanks, work. Joe. Thanks, Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Keep it Thank up. You. It's time Thank well spent. you. It's a huge priority. It's a great program. Yeah. It's yeah. Very exciting. I appreciate you guys are doing a great time. job. Okay. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Uh, I just want to take a, a quick breath to think about the implications of scheduling here. Uh, so our our next item is. Um, is the is the uh, using the communications platform? 
Uh, I think th th this, this, this discussion is going to take, I don't think we should be having this discussion in a seriously time constrained moment, which we are now. Uh, this isn't going to be, this isn't, it doesn't, this doesn't have to take two hours, but I think it's going to take more than 15 or 20 minutes. And I think the, qual the quality of the discussion will be poor. If we have a special meeting in a week or 10 days with the only item on the agenda being this, it'll give you all a chance to read. We can go through, I can take three minutes to make sure if you haven't read the slides, I'll restate them. And then that's it. We won't have a discussion. Are people willing to have another meeting a week to 10 days from now? Right, uh, raise your hand if you're okay with that. I just think it's it's a burden. I know we're meeting a lot, but it, it, I just think it's going to be better. We're going to make a better decision, whatever we decide. So, Could I ask respectfully if it could be a week? As opposed to more than a week. Yeah, okay. Unless it's yeah, okay. No. So, so, uh, Michael, you're, uh, are you... Do you have a strong reason not to do this, or are you abstaining? Or no, no, no. I voted for it. I just oh, you did. Sorry. Would need would require a date. I'm going on uh, out of country vacation uh, towards the end of the month, and would be out of pocket and not able to attend a later meeting. Okay. All right. So maybe the end of maybe. Have, let's just be specific. Next Thursday evening, same time, same channel. Does that works. Hold on. That works for me. Ah, how do I? Are we raising our hand if it works, or what? What's the? Well, uh... I'm just gonna just speak up if it doesn't. If it's really bad, um, I just want to. I guess I can look at my calendar without changing what I'm sharing. Okay, hold on. I'm pretty sure I can do it. It's February eighth. It tennis, tennis, tennis. Maybe some town work. <laughs> Todd, you have too much interest in my browser windows. <laughs> I, because you're interesting. What do you want me to do? By the way, I want to tell you that my link that used to say P words now now is called Claven. Very good. You learned yeah, very good. You know, I was a system at MIT. I'll get into your stuff. You know. Uh, okay. So I don't hear any objections. So next Thursday at six thirty, we will have this discussion. I'm going to take one minute and run it through. Basically, the top half of this chart is the same. And this is a template for the kind of discussions we can have for the housing working group, the downtown rejuvenation group. Once we complete the outcomes that we want to add to, you know, Larry, the ones that you suggested we added, this is the use of this framework in this particular case for one of our tools, which is the communications platform. But as you saw earlier, we have a whole set of tools. And basically what we would be doing going forward is taking that top half of the chart and then for a particular tool saying, which, how do we want to use that tool? Where do, we, where do we want to apply that tool? And as Patrick uh, has told us many times, and as Charles has confirmed, the communications platform doesn't just have to go after the objective of build a list of interested people and try to have them come, you know, particularly during our best and biggest events. It could be used for these six things. <laughs> Some, by the way, with greater effect than others. And that's one of the things we're going to want to hear, whether it's from class four or from uh, uh, Jess, uh, Greta, tell me Jess's last name, Jess. Um, Jess Kirby. Jess Kirby, who's a local, uh, a local website developer and runs a social media and blog program, has this, for about 10 years, has been quite successful at doing the kind of things that you know, we've, we've often talked about in this program. So moving visitors from peak to other times, that's one of our, that was that the year round activities outcome or attracting qualified employees, that's the strong employee base. Attracting restaurant owners, that's more food option outcome. Increasing awareness of events um, that satisfied visitors. And it's also under resident community, satisfied community members. Attracting families with children, growing resident population and more school aged children. Increasing awareness of events, again, with community members. So what we'll talk about next time is how do we wanna use the communications platform? And the suggestion is that we pick 
some of those. I think we've already confirmed that for the amount of money we might have, we're not going to be able to do all six of these things. So give some thought to which of these is most important, or if you think there's something else that's more important. And then my suggestion for the process following next week is to tell class four and Jess Kirby, this is what, these are the outcomes we want to buy. We want to attract three families with children to move to Woodstock. You can change that. We want to attract 25 qualified employees to apply for jobs. We want to be able to track that. We want to increase the number of visitors to Woodstock during April, May, and June. And we want to do all of the above, hopefully without increasing or intentionally increasing the number of visitors during our peak events, because we don't yet have a way to manage that crowd. And if that's the case, we want to end the next meeting by saying, how much would it be worth if we got those things? We then will be able at the next meeting to say to class four and Jess Kirby, here's what we think this is worth. 50,000, 100,000, 2,000. Tell us whether you could do this and how you would do it. Convince us that this is doable for the amount of money that we're asking you to do. And they may say, we drop out. They may say, you're nuts. They may say, no, this is a no brainer. We can easily do it. They may say anything in between. But, and that will then lead to a final meeting a few weeks later, a month later, whenever we want to gather, where we hear from those two. They tell us how they will give us either this or whatever list we create. It doesn't have to be these things. This is my idea, but it could be something different. It can be, you know, it can go back to any of those. Any of these things on this list <laughs> or things that belong on that list. And we say to them, okay. And then they tell us if they can do it or not. And then we pick, if we want one of the two of them to do it, we pick them. So that's the process. People are comfortable with that process. And if so, we're, we're done with this conversation and we'll start fresh with these three or four pages yeah. uh, on the on time. Let me just ask EDC members first. Uh, yes. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know whether what it, is this worth is, is an, an answer we can give. I mean, you can multiply three families, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I think more of the question would be to these two, what, uh, how, how can you achieve this at, and at what cost? At what's the minimum cost you could achieve? Right. I think we're asking okay. us what's it worth. We, we, they, they are, it, it's possible that the vendors uh, will not propose with that question. So we, we need to find that out. And it's okay. We but, can choose. But we're creating their budget, which seems like backwards to me. Uh, okay. Well, we'll, 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 fine. So we will decide. We're sorry. I mean, we'll this, decide. this is no, introspective, no, no. right? This isn't, this isn't published to them, right? That's not what you're applying, right? No, no, no. I, I'm saying we would give them whatever. Not, we, we, sorry, we will rewrite this page, including what's in the blue. My only point is we're going to send the vendors a page. This is what I was suggesting it be. What you're describing is perfectly reasonable. It could be what you are suggesting. But my point is that the end of, le of the next meeting is a page that says to two vendors that we're talking to, this is what we would like to achieve. And giving you either tell us what the cost would be or this is what we would like the cost to be. Can you do it? Whatever that question, whatever, however you'd like to word the question. All of the, My only point is we need to end up with a page that we give to some them, then they come back to us later. So, uh, Greta, are you raising your hand or the pass? Yeah, I'm raising my hand. All right, Greta, and then and then Beth. I, I want to give EDC members a chance. Go ahead, Greta. Yeah. So, um, this topic and this discussion um has continued to be kind of um delayed, and um, so I would just love if everyone can consider some of the questions they might have for the marketing working group and, um, you know, just questions and concerns or um, thoughts in the next week. So we can really have a, um, just dive into the conversation because I would love to get the information out there and, um, and get going with this. Thank you for saying that. It's a really important point. We, we are not, I said, we start fresh at the next week. That will be the application of our responsibility. You all I, have these slides. Great. The picture of you with like a recording studio behind you is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. I just think it's fantastic. I'm in a weird place down here. 
But yeah. it pro you probably can't hear any echo, right? The sound quality That's must well be. No, but I would like sound to have quality you. is phenomenal. <laughs> I would much. like to have you playing some of those instruments. <laughs> I don't want to lose Greta's point. So please, it's just three or four slides. It's you, you saw what they were. They talk about the different possible uses of the communications platform. You understand the goals and objectives. You may think a few things are missing. Please come to the next meeting with your proposal or ideas about that page, not the page, what is it worth and so forth, the page before that, the one that says, here are the one or two most important things that we want to use this platform to achieve. If you think it's great to attract employees, make it that. If you think they can attract families, make it that. If you think they can't attract families, strike that from the proposal and have it do something else. But that's what we need to. Can we not just communicate also in the interim with Concerned, so that she is yes please send please it, reach absolutely. out call email me uh marion that you know i can give you all the names of the entire marketing working group or i can forward that information along but yes a lot of communication is what we need because there's we need to know where everyone's at and we want to be able to deliver what everyone's looking for right so but just send it to Greta and Marion and not to the group because we don't want to trigger. We can't have too many people on an email exchange. So yeah, please, that's a great idea. So and Greta and Marion, if you can come with a summary of what's been asked of you or a list, that Absolutely. would be a great, a great way to start out the meeting. So we don't have to start with the slides. We can start. Everyone's read the slides. You've seen them. You understand them. What? Okay. All right. Uh, Beth, Lev, any other comments from EDC members? Okay, Beth, last call. Well, I think um, that there are at least three members of the marketing committee that had some questions, concerns um, that I didn't think that we were, I thought we were going to talk about class four and not just because we haven't done an RFP to invite other people to to solve this issue. So they need to do a public RFP. I looked tonight to try to find the policy. And um, if we're required to do it, we will for okay. sure. If we're not required to do it, we can have a discussion I, okay. at next week's meeting about whether we should do it. So I, I of course, if we're required to, I, I looked for the policy and I, I think I have it somewhere. Yeah, and, and there were uh, edits to it and we, we I tried to do it. I just couldn't get it in time. So we will definitely adhere to the policy. Because I think most of the committee was kind of just focused on class four. Yeah. And by the way, I think the, the committee or members of the committee can, I hope, will participate in that discussion. And I think having having their point of view about who to select is is something not at the next meeting that we're not going to be considering that. What we're going to be considering at the next meeting is what objectives and what EDC objectives and goals do we want to use the tool of the communication platform to achieve? And uh, the, but I remember, this is great because we run out of money. No, the, sorry, I want to reassure people that the platform can be put, this is not the information that we had previously. The platform, the soft, the platform can be put on hold at a very low cost per month, hundreds of dollars per month which is the reason I'm wanting us to take, it's not the reason, it allows us to take the proper time to make this decision. If we don't make the funding decision by the end of February, the most recent estimate I have from Charles is that it will cost us less than $200 per month. What about the origin piece? Uh, sorry, if the origin piece runs out, then that, that, if that runs out by the end of February, then we need to have a proposal at the next month. Is that correct, Jennifer? If it does, sorry. Oh, if, okay. it, if it does, we Beth, can you research that? If it does, at our special meeting, we will add one item to the agenda, which is to fund the way. If we if we don't fund that, I think it's about six thousand dollars. If we don't fund that, our website shuts down on March first. So, if that's the case, I don't think we want to shut the website down. But we will deal with that in March. But could, will you need to make sure to research that and then. Well, have have Greta and Marion incorporated into their report back to us. Marion has her hand up, John. Oh, thank you. Okay, Marion, go ahead. Oh, I, I think I, I was just going to clarify that we are the, the 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 purpose of the meeting is not to decide who the vendor is. The purpose right. of the meeting is to decide what our object, you know, what we're trying to achieve with right. whatever vendor we use. Then the next meeting is, and by the way, the marketing committee is welcome, obviously, to attend. And as 
members of the community can make make comments on it. But I think the point, I mean, yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I just make a statement? Um, I just want to make sure that, you know, because of marketing with the contract with class four, yeah, we can put things on hold, but if we could make a decision next week with the objectives and the outcomes that the EDC does want to have us to deliver, ideally we got, want to keep up with social media and keep things. We can figure out what our budget is, plan A, plan B, whatever the costs are, but it's important to continue what we're doing and keep engagement with the database and um, just move forward instead of waiting until April or May until things are w rolled out. So that was just my two cents. No, agree completely. And so that's why we're suggesting this meeting next week. Yes, and, thank you so much and, that you guys will And we'll, and we'll have a vendor selection meeting as fast as we can meet or the, I mean, we are, our meeting, our, our regular monthly meeting will only be two weeks after that. I suppose we could sneak something in in between, but we could be in a position to make a decision on March 1st or 2nd, something like that. So, you know, it, it, it may be a very, very minimal delay. So uh, if, and if we can decide next week to have another, have another meeting if the, if the folks can, can come back to us quickly. And if we don't need to have a public RFP. Or, or, I just heard, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, regardless of if we are, are legally, um, if, if we are legally required to have an RFP, um, it feels like it makes sense to put something out and do it quickly. You know, it's that there might be other people in the community who could have solutions and, you know, and like that now's the time to let them know, like, hey, if you're interested, it's next week, period. Well, well, it's you don't mean next week, a week from now. It's a week from the future. The reason why we can't issue an RFP now is we can't tell anyone what we want them to do. <laughs> No, but what we can say to, to somebody is we're, we're looking at the marketing and we're looking for people who have these skills and we're discussing it next week and we're making decisions in the next couple of weeks. Like just to at least put it out to the community makes sense that, that we have more than, you know, we know what our choices are. But they, they might just call and have a million questions. I mean, I don't think any corporations I've ever met put out a free RFP. Like, you know, it, you get the details, you ask what you want and they submit the proposal, I think. I think, Deb, how's this, Deb, in, the, in this following spirit? Let's be prepared. If someone, if someone would like to volunteer to draft the standard language of the RFP, so, so, absent the section on this is what we want to, you know, to accomplish. But there are other, other things. How about it? We, we would be in a position to issue an RFP, a public RFP, the day after of ne next week, once we decide on our sure. But we, we don't know what the goals are. We don't know what the budget is and we don't know what tools we want to use. But other than I that. I understand that, but, but we don't, we don't <laughs> also know who's out there who is capable of doing the types of things. And I'm an just RFP. saying. That's all. It's yeah. something else. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. some yeah. other thing. I don't disagree with the idea of getting out there, Deb, but that's not, that's muddying the waters of the principle of RFP. No, no, no. I, I think what, let me, let me, sorry. Deb, did you want to comment? I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I'm just, uh, uh, yes. Um, yes, we're going to need an RFP. One, one way or the other, we're going to need to put out exactly what it is that we're looking for. All I'm saying is we're talking about class four and this one person. And I'm saying there may be other talented people in the pool of Woodstock who I, might want to mm -hmm. you know, be a part of it or might have the better solution. And so I'm just saying to let people know, like, hey, we're working on this. If you're in, if, you know. If you fit within these requirements, what so how do you how do you want to do that? I mean, just literally putting it on the list serve and just letting people know that it's not just you know. Do you want to draft something? Sure, I'd, I'd be happy to. I think, I just so think my, the question I think at hand is is not what that should say. I mean, we could each have our slight variations. And the question is when we should say it. And I think what Deb is proposing is that we say it, you know, tomorrow or the next day and invite people to the Thursday meeting. I think that the downside of that, Deb, is that we're not going to talk at all about vendors, about who we want to do this at the next meeting. At okay. all. It's, it's not on the agenda. It was that it was between these two people. And I'm just saying, I think we need uh, to write. Right. I agree with that. I, I think that that's fine. So let's let's have that. Let's make that. Let's confirm that decision or not, whatever the EDC thinks. Let's put that on the agenda for the next 
meeting, which will be the last item on the meeting. We will have our goals. We will be ready to ask people, um, I, you know, and, and then let's decide that and then be and be ready. And I think we could be ready very quickly to back to Jennifer's point about not wanting to delay. We could be right. ready very quickly, but I think it's premature. I, I would do it next Friday, not this Friday, I guess is my point. So we'll try if we decide to do that, we'll try we'll try to do that within a couple of days after our meeting. So and I think yeah, that's maybe even if we have more of a vision, maybe we can get Tom to put it out in a standard or something for you. You know what I mean? I think it's a great idea to just don't think we know anything and someone's going to come with questions. They're going to be like, well, I don't know. What do yeah. we, what, I don't know. You know, that's all we'd have to say. Just a point of order, John, can, can we work to try and figure out where the guidelines or rules are around when we need to put out an RFP? Because we just picked placemates um, and they're going to now send them a check. Right. And we didn't put out an RFP for that. And when, as soon as I typed in placemates into Google, their 10 competitors bought their uh, AdWords name and they came up first. So um, I think we need some guidance on on when we uh, decide to do an RFP and, and what the town is legally uh, needs to do in these situations. Yeah, I don't actually think we need guidance. We may need guidance, but, but I believe that the actual policy, uh, we have experience in interpreting the policy. So this is a minor point. We need to get the policy. We may need to get guidance beyond that, but I think the policy may actually answer the question whether it relates to placemates or these things. It's a very good point. We need to we need to be conforming to the policy. I believe, by the way, this is I, I believe anyway, we need to be conforming to the policy. The first step is to get the policy. And we went through this before. So we'll we will conform it. And if in fact we did not conform to the policy with placemates, we will have to. We we have to conform to the policy. We will have to redo that, you know, and so forth. And no question about that. The policy, yeah, good. yeah. The, the the policy gives us I, the reason why I'm not too uncomfortable is the policy gives us very significant discretion. And so let's we'll 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 look at that policy carefully. So, okay. So our so we'll meeting next next Thursday. The agenda is to go through uh, the objectives to uh, frame the what we want and then to decide if we want to or, or need to, one or the other, want to or need to, and if we don't need to, whether we want to invite other people in and, uh, and we'll make that decision next Thursday. And by then we'll have a copy of the policy so we'll know whether we need to. Larry, if you could help me with that, that would be great. Or if you could take a look. If you just follow up with the, yeah, with the towns. So you, is I, our goal, what is our absolute goal at end of business next Thursday? That we basically, What homework do we need to do before then? I Just think the homework, the homework is for you all to look at the slides, the four slides that were in there, at least the straw man to start, and to change, to come to the meeting with, with, uh, with ideas for what you think we should be asking at least class four and Jess Kirby and maybe others, what we should be asking of them to them to do what should we, what we should be telling them to do, and also what to Greta's and Marion's point I think or at least Greta's point, what questions you may have for Class Four or for Jess Kirby certainly based on your experience with Class Four or based on your and familiarity should this be should this be submitted to to the Greta. marketing group ahead of time like as best we can so that we are more efficient or are you asking us to come to the meeting with this information as a first-hand offense. We're asking you to send it to Greta and Marion, who will Great. distribute it, of course, to the to the rest to their colleagues on the marketing. Great. It, so we're yeah. saying read I, this, I, do the homework, get it to Greta and Marion. So we're in a great position to start the meeting on Thursday. Yeah. And it's more so questions for the marketing group. It's not necessarily those two vendors. It's questions for us on what these decisions, how we're going to be making these decisions and what you are all looking for. And you're, you know, yeah, that's. We want to be the most prepared for success before the opening. Yeah. Gavel Let's on, be, right? Yes. Well, and, and I think just to put an edge on it, it's what are, it's not just what are your questions? What are your concerns? Yeah. I mean, I know I've talked to some of you. Some of you are very concerned. And I think we, you know, what are those concerns? What would make you not concerned? What, what, why are you concerned? My concern is we're never going to vote on it. And Greta's going to hate us. Right. That's my concern. <laughs> I just want us to get have everything ready to go. That's really what. Yeah. So we all have homework to do. If we have yeah. a, an opinion we and we think of it early, it's our duty and hope to 
present it to the marketing group and so they can be prepared to answer it and we can move forward with business expeditely, right? Yeah, and, and have clarity on what you think the actual goals that we're trying to achieve with our communications or our marketing are. And John has proposed some, right. which you may agree or not agree, but sort of give it some some thought in advance so we can have a, a really right. good and efficient conversation. Right. Happy right. to start with a blank piece of paper. So, okay, we have two more items on the agenda. Um, um, the first, I, Stuart Matthews has been patiently sitting here. Uh, you may not be patiently sitting here anymore. <laughs> be patient. Stuart got a it? haircut. Stuart, uh, I actually took a shower. But thank you. Could you give us uh, a two-minute summary of what you're going to be proposing? Yeah, so um, uh, we're two minutes over our, our your 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 ending time, but I will. Um, so the downtown investment committee is is focused on developing a longer-term plan on how to optimize any money or investment or effort that we might make in the downtown. And the approach that we're taking is we have come up with four points that we're calling gateways. Um, it's the area in front of uh, Billings Farms, it's the green, it's Mechanic Street Square, and it's the East End Park. And, and if you think about those as sort of surrounding Woodstock, they're the four ways you might consider how you would approach Woodstock. We want to look at each of those areas and figure out what we might do to, um, I'll say optimize, but just upgrade, improve, enhance, uh, make those make those areas, make those um, places more attractive to residents and more attractive to visitors. We consider then the linkages between what what links uh, those four locations, and that's the streets and the walkways. It's the it's the trees, it's the sidewalks, it's the signage, et cetera. And those are the uh, areas that we want to focus on, that we're choosing to focus on. Over the next year, we intend to uh, meet with stakeholders, get community interest, take advantage of the great work that's been done historically in Woodstock to identify ways to improve these various areas and other, other parts of town, and come back to you uh, with uh, proposals that you can consider for each of those areas. And what we would hope is that our proposals can be viewed uh, incrementally and not as sort of a package to take it or leave it. We realize this is a long-term program and what we'd like to do is present to you a series of things that we can do each year that'll keep taking us incrementally towards uh, achieving an end vision. So that's that's the work that we have set out for ourselves over the next year. Where we are right now is there's two areas that we um, would like to start with. Uh, and they're they're all intended that those two areas are intended to be around what I would call the linkages area, which is the streets and walkways, um, the 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 parts of the, the the town that link those four areas together that really define our downtown. And um, the 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 two grants we have one is is for downtown maintenance and beautification, and it is for twenty six thousand five hundred dollars, and it represents a series of um, a series of small things that that are done now either funded separately through the EDC or just done by volunteer groups or by individuals paying for them. Um, we're trying to bring them under one umbrella, so to speak. <clears throat> and they're all things that sort of enhance the image and the attractiveness of the downtown. It's replacing umbrellas, it's cleaning tables, it's cleaning trash cans, it's installing flowers, it's hanging lights. Uh, maintaining Teagle's Landing, et cetera. So a lot of little things, but but in total, they, I think, cre help create the the ambiance, the vision, the um, atmosphere that is Woodstock. So that is uh, that is that is sort of one item. And the second item wait, wait, is- Sorry, Stuart, before you do the second item, that item for 26,000 includes the $11,000 for Beth. request from the chamber that we talked about putting into a larger context, Correct. This is a larger context. Oh, Correct. Okay. Um, and if you think about it, those things in context with these others, they're they're all similar. They're all um, items that that affect the downtown, that impact the appearance of the community. That are that are you know relatively small dollars, but we think have a significant impact. Um, the the second uh, the the second issue that we're speaking about is the uh, is the tree work. You've heard me speak about the tree work in the past. 
So just some stats, we have 250 trees um, scattered uh, around the downtown in Woodstock. And the reality is that in, in recent decades, there has been li very little attention being placed to those. Uh, the result is that, that we've got a situation, I think it's much like the school, it's much like the wastewater system where uh, the deferred maintenance on the trees has been pushed down the, the road. And we think it's important to at least get started in some way, shape or form with caring for those trees and replacing the ones that are being taken out. You know, we're taking out any number of trees each year, but there's no program to replace them. And what we're trying to do is come up with a with a with a thoughtful long term plan at which money can be judiciously invested to um, to care for what I think is a is a really critical an important um, natural asset that that makes Woodstock what it is. So we're proposing for the the, the tree work about thirty five thousand dollars to start. I would say that is again a multi year program. We can increase it or decrease it as as funds are available. But the reality is that there is a lot of deferred maintenance that has to be done. There are trees that are dangerous. There are trees that are in danger of falling. There's trees that need to be pruned. And if they are pruned, they will last longer than if they're not. So we would like to get started on that. And we'd like to get started on replacing some of the trees that are missing. Um, because you know, if you think about it, when you lose a tree, it's going to take quite a few years for that canopy to be replaced. So, mm. you know, I always think of what makes what made the Rockefellers so um impactful as they thought for the long term and they they were they did things that benefited the community for years and years and years to come and so i think the trees fall into that category so those are the two categories of, of grants that we would uh, be proud to submit and uh happy to take questions or defer them to a future meeting as as you all see fit no let's defer if it's all right let's defer them to the next meeting at least i think will you have this proposal in more detail at the next meeting the next monthly meeting or you know i'm not sure what other detail we can get i mean we we we're ha I'm happy to get any any additional information that this group and you can you can come back to me through john or directly uh with questions and i'm, I'm happy to work on any other additional all right well, I think I just a just a documented proposal Stuart. you know to to present to us so we can really just see it on paper well he's he's actually submit that's been included in the memo so i think we, what we sort of have here is like we did with housing is we come forward with a proposal like this. It's sitting in your documents. You have a month to kind of look at it. You've heard a high level summary of it. And then at the next meeting, we can consider it. And there's two, it's just two pages long or three pages long, but it has the details. It has the breakdowns of those numbers that, that Stuart gave and so forth. So I'm sorry, Stuart. I did, I did, I did. Yeah, see no worries. And, I, and I'm happy if anybody wants to come back with questions, I'm happy to, to dig in and get more information. I, I, I'm, I'm happy to provide whatever. So just tell me. Can okay. it be free? Um, if we find people to fund it. <laughs> Unless you're really good with a chainsaw, Todd. <laughs> okay, so so offline then, feel free to, to talk to Stuart about this and then we'll have a, hope, you know, we'll have a discussion next month about um, voting for it. Next month, by the way, on February 15th, we receive our first quarter revenues for 2023, which will begin to give us a little bit of a preview as to whether or not you know, of what the year is, the first of four, obviously. So we'll have some preview as to what the year might look like. Does, does everybody know that he had a two-page thing in there? Uh, I just said it. Oh, okay. oh, oh yeah. The, the two-page right up in the memo. Yeah, that yes. yeah, was pretty clear. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. I, I don't want to repeat myself because no, a, a younger member of the EDC accused me of repeating things because I'm old. Ooh. Oof. What? So, what? That's a body blow, John. Who's younger than you? <laughs> it was Joe. <laughs> so, um, Stuart, thank you. This is good stuff. So it's it, there. There lot. are three. There are three pages. It, it's I think the last. It maybe it's the last three pages in the memo. So people may not have gotten to it. But yeah. it's in your inbox from the memo for tonight's meeting. Okay. All right. The last Thanks, item. Chris. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks a lot. Right. I think we really. I, I hope we can vote on this at the next monthly meeting. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, this will take right. one, one minute. We need to launch the various groups. Um, I, th I think a number of people have suggested we combine some of these groups. When I sent out an email asking people to clarify which group they'd like to be part of, three people responded. <laughs> Thank you, Greta, Larry, and Michael. The rest of you didn't. 
That's so, not fair. I said I would be in any group. Uh, did you say, okay, I apologize. You're I, welcome. Yeah. I, so, and Todd. So for the rest of you, um, if you would take a look at that list, it's in the email and let me know. Um, we, yeah, we need to get started. So um, I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Um, is there, well, no, we don't have an agenda item for any other business. Um, sorry we ran over, but I think it was a very good discussion about housing um, and uh, and also a good discussion about setting up the marketing thing. I look forward to the discussion next week. We have a motion to adjourn. Some right up. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> you need to know there's no discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? We are adjourned at 847. Sorry, folks, about the... Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Take care. 8.43, excuse me. Good stuff.